Hi everyone, welcome to the Crowd Cast of Firefish. I am absolutely delighted I have my favourite ex-fish with me, Alan Hiddleston, who's going to join us and tackle the subject um, of e-learning, because I thought this was really important for us because we've all gone virtual, we've all gone into a remote setting, um, but we're probably going to have to start to look at training, onboarding and doing all of this remotely. And how on earth do we do this within our businesses? So Alan um, has spent a good amount of time in the recruitment world and then moved over um, into the e-learning, representing one of the largest um, e-learning software companies, uh, D2L. So I'm delighted you can join us, Alan. Um, because anybody that can take, you know, a really good global view of what's happening in a subject and recruitify it into our world is, is gold mine to me or gold dust to me even. Um, so thank you for joining us um, and uh, really lovely to have you back. Well, thanks, Wendy. Yeah, it's great to uh, be back on the uh, Crowdcast and uh, talking to you as well. Um, obviously, I've, uh, as you said, I've uh, spent, spent a a good amount of time in various different sales and leadership roles uh, over the past kind of 15 years and uh, most recently I was at uh, uh, Firefish Software prior to coming to D2L uh, and as you quite rightly said you know D2L is one of the leading kind of online learning platform providers uh, globally so I get to see a lot of uh, what works and, and what doesn't and I'm, I'm really looking forward to having a bit of a, a chat with you about it today. Brilliant. Well, that's where I want to start, because you've got this insight of what's happening globally. I mean, um, I think when we kicked in around March, uh, you know, you and I talk very regularly, don't we? And um, you were actually going, whoa, this is actually we're, we're busy. We're going to get really busy. And, um, you know, e-learning is one of the is one of the sort of growth areas because, you know, it's the only way to learn now. So what's been happening in the world of e-learning that you've seen it? Yeah, def I mean, you're definitely right there. I mean, like there was a while where like back in when lockdown kicked in and things, I was like, we're, we're, we're going to be the toilet roll. <laughs> um, you know, everyone was kind of going crazy because they were thinking, well, how are we going to like, how are we going to train people? Uh, and obviously, like, you know, the, the, the immediate tendency there was like to, to do things in Zoom, right? And everyone was sort of scrambling round about trying to, you know, because people had to, you had a lot of factors there at like the start of lockdown because you've got to continue to do business as usual. You've got to like be able to onboard people. You've got to be able to train them. You have to like do ongoing personal professional development. You need to do compliance training or like, stay in business and things. But then you've got all these new regulations. You've got new technology people are using. You've got new ways of working. You've got leaders that are having to manage remotely. And then it's like, well, how are we going to deal with business as usual and all the new stuff? And how can we do it all in a completely new format that most organizations are really not that experienced in, in doing? Um, and there's a number of different impacts from that. I think that like, you know, things like Zoom and Teams, like they became like way of life yeah. for everybody just in how they do business and things. And even like, you know, Zoom drinks and, and everything. But very, very quickly, people become disengaged with that medium because it's just, it's just everywhere and they, get, they can't stay at the screen. Um, and then you sort of get like a lot of loss of kind of like the tribal knowledge that people have in the office as well. So, you know, a lot of like learning, I know a little bit about obviously the kind of recruitment world, a lot of learning is just overhearing what people are saying and listening in and, you know, managers overhearing what people are saying and giving them coaching and feedback in real time. But all of that sort of thing gets all of that informal learning that's probably perhaps the most valuable just gets lost when you kind of lock it down and everyone's you're just sitting in your house you know, <laughs> you really no mates <laughs> what's it when you're gonna buy toilet room you know? <laughs> but i think i think that's exactly it you know recruitment you know we've all sort of gone into recruitment agencies and you know learned through sitting beside the top biller or looking and overhearing what's happening and hearing everything on the phone and it's really hard to replace that so when you're working with companies you know what are the steps then in terms of translating that onto some form of e-learning that you can still share that tribal knowledge yeah i mean it's it's that is the sort of like you know million dollar question if you like but it, I think the, the first thing is to just kind of accept that your standard format is li literally out the window, right? So there's you, people's in, intuition is like, right, we did the we did this like there's an onboarding training course. It starts with you spend you go to the office, you've got a half a day in the morning or whatever, half a day in the afternoon, you get some handouts or whatever. 
uh, so so all that's gone, right? And you're not going to get people in a in a Zoom room for eight hours in, in the first day at a new organisation because I mean they're not going to be there the second day. Um, so so I think the key thing there is to actually to be a bit more essential. So you know you you I know that you have quite a kind of focus for that. It is to go back to objectives. So like what is the point? Of this learning so it may be that like your format for onboarding is well our onboarding is a week and you're in the class and you go and meet various teams and blah, 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 blah. okay fine well that's not going to happen um what's the objective of that what's the objective of meeting that team and that team and that team? what are the things that you need that person to get from all those things and start to make a bit of an inventory of that stuff and then once you have an inventory of like well what are the essential bits of this then you can actually start to think, right, okay, well, what is the format for each one of those things? Like, how will we do that? Um, and, you know, an example of that would be, you need people to kind of learn about your company culture. And, and I know that like from a lot of kind of like recruitment businesses, they're quite entrepreneurial and a lot of their culture will be built around about their history. And that will be built around about where did the founder come from or founders come from and did they work together and how did that all come about and things. And that might be quite a fun story to hear from the CEO for like a, a total of an hour about the first car they had and a desk under the stairs and blah, blah, blah. We but don't think, do that. But, <laughs> but, but no, but like, but think about that in an online world, right? Like people don't like, there's other ways that they could learn about the culture of the organization. And, you know, and, and, and it, was, it might come across in like quite a charismatic way, you know, I'm, 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 I'm sort of, you know, this is just here, right? But like, you know, it might be like you could almost some like, uh, you know, CEOs are fantastic presenters, and they could be like a, a, it's just like a stand-up routine, knowing about the first two years of the company or whatever, and that really sets the scene and it gets people buzzed up and excited about where we are now and things. But actually, in an online format, like it's going to be really, really hard to get that same sizzle and buzz across and things. So actually, think about how how would you actually get across like what the culture is really like now and where we came from and what are those authentic stories and assets and things that you can use to so it might be that they actually need to go and spend time with other people that do their jobs so it might be that it doesn't come from the top down it comes from other people who are doing the job and who maybe even maybe even people that have just recently completed the onboarding they're the best people that are the best place to sort of give them that information um, it's really interesting because you, you you hit the nail on the head there like for for so long we've probably had our own standard onboarding that everybody comes in and they go and sit with each of the teams and they talk and they ask questions each team sort of gets that old powerpoint up and does the same thing um and just like everything else we're doing right now in recruitment we're sort of having to re-engineer what we're doing but we it is a great time to think about well, why were we doing that in the first place and what we were trying to achieve um, and then it's really i think what you're saying there is taking it onto different mediums and how can you get that information across to that new person or that that person that's trying to train into different skills um either you know by video or by different types of presentations or sort of joint learning have you got some good because d2l as well has been very remote first for gosh how, how long now um how many years have you been remote first for well, I think we've we've had kind of like office locations, and then we've had like a large remote workforce, but pro, pro, for a, a large number of years. Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, yeah, I mean, there's 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 lots of different things that you want that you want to build into there. Um, but it's about like if you go back to the objectives, are that like you know part of the onboarding process is I need you to understand like. A, B, and C, I need you to understand the procedure for this, the procedure for that, blah, blah, blah. Okay, right, fine. There's a place where you can go and read those things. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't actually need someone to stand up and talk you through those things, right? Read those things, take a quiz. Did you get more than 8%? Yes, tick okay, then you mm -hmm. okay. So th th there's those types of things that are in it. But then there's the, it's the softer things that are more challenging to train people on, like, are you going to train people on, like, how do you, like, how do you communicate, like, how do you ask questions? Like, how do you do a pitch? It's those things that I think are more challenging. But you can set people like challenges digitally as well. You can say, right, you've got to learn a pitch. You've got to learn the elevator pitch for next week. You've got to record it, upload it, and then you get feedback on it. You know, so there's there's ways, there's methods that you can use to capture that like role play and room experience uh, to, to develop those skills that people might have done. Yeah. 
That's a great idea. I mean, essentially, you know, you came on as a remote worker within DTL, D2L, you know, years and years ago. So did you have to do that? Did you have to come in, get your pitch, record it, and then get feedback? And is that something that happens all the time then? You're sharing that learning? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, it was literally like, I was really excited about starting, you know, and then I then was like just me in my office or on my own uh, on the first day with my laptop, you know? Um, but I think, I think there's a there's a big issue that people have with that type of format, <clears throat> and it's about safety, because people are insecure about things, and regardless of how confident or outgoing an individual you are, like if you think, well, I would record some stuff and throw it up on the internet for people to give me feedback, <laughs> I'm just going to get a lot of criticism, and you know, I, and that's very difficult to do early on in your journey as an exactly. So you have to be very careful about how you set context around about those things and how you say, look, this is the purpose of this. This isn't, you're not throwing this up on LinkedIn for like thousands of people to, to troll you or whatever. This is something that you're doing with a group of people who are just like you at the same stage in their journey. Some of them will be better than you. Some of them will be worse than you. Some of them, all of you will all learn from each other based mm -hmm. on you know, what you do with this. And this is a safe space. Therefore, you know, go, go on and, and do your thing. And, and it is mandatory, so you're all going to have to do it. So you've got to make sure it happens. Um, so how do you create those space, those sort of safe spaces in a practical sense within a company? Well, I mean, part of it's cultural, right? And you sort of have to sort of create that learning culture that, like, you know, no one, no one is, no one's beyond learning, right? Everyone has to continue to learn, and everyone will learn through feedback, and feedback's a good thing. And you should all be giving each other feedback and feedback should be constructive and it's fine and it's a good thing to happen. It's a healthy culture. And then the other part of it is yeah, yeah, you have to enable it in a way that you know that works. Like so if you're saying like upload your video to here, you've got to like show people that well, you're just putting it in here. There's a lot in that area that only those people in your course and your group can get access to, and therefore you can be confident that it's going nowhere else, right? It's just it's just for a laugh within the first week. Just, just get it done like so there's the there's the culture aspect and then there's the actual kind of like process thing that, that to play off I suppose. Yeah. And there's loads of tools out there actually that you can do all of this for free, isn't there? So you know, just from what I'm listening to you, I can automatically go, yeah, you can download it from Zoom and upload it. And we we use Sprout and you know it's a really cost effective way yeah. of hosting videos mm -hmm. um, and being able to look at that password present, you know, protected within your teams. Um, and there's there's loads of those sort of now videos are actually quite cheap out there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think you know you can you can be really sophisticated about this type of stuff. Like you know we have like a sort of AI driven video assignment tool that like automatically scores and recommends and feedbacks people that are doing that. But on the other side of it, there's nothing to stop you recording mm -hmm. it on your own and emailing it to people mm -hmm. or putting it into OneDrive or Google Drive or whatever it is. And then, you know, or, or Teams, like a lot of people have yeah. Teams anyway, but Teams people can comment on it in there just within their group. So, I mean, there's a lot of options that you can get that experience without, you know, having to sort of go yeah. uh, go, go crazy with it. But it's, the main thing is that you you actually sort of are deliberate about these types of learning experiences because they're the things that, we, that have impact for us. Deliberate is a really good word. And I think it's, um, you know, we've touched on a little bit of onboarding, but I think, you know, there can be all a lot of sort of, okay, gosh, we haven't met this person, you know, you know, Farfish as well. We've onboarded like six people since lockdown and it's really tough doing it all virtually. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we've learned as we've gone and I know you helped advise us at the start as to how to do that too. Um, but, you know, from, from that perspective, it's um, a lot of effort can go into that because it's seen as that particular period of time to try and get this person up to, um, you know, speed and, and actually up to a, a learning uh, um, ability that they can do their job. But how do we retain that? Because that's the challenge that a lot of recruitment owners will be thinking now as well is like, actually, hang on a minute. What happens every month, every week, every quarter that we're, we're, we're trying to sort of share that information about candidates? different offer scenarios, et cetera, as well, that people come up against? Yeah, so, I mean, there's there's the there's the ongoing sort of learning culture side of it. And with this new, like, sort of virtual context that most people are working in, I know a lot of people get back to the office now, but I think it's fair to assume there's going to be an element of virtual more in people's lives than ever before. Definitely. Um, 
that you have to be more deliberate about it, right? One of the things that I have hated about lockdown is like Zoom quizzes, right? Because it's like <laughs> well, I don't like that. quizzes before they went on Zoom, so I hate them even more than Zoom. <laughs> One will happen at seven p.m. on Saturday oh, until no. nine p.m. You know, there's nothing spontaneous or exciting or oh wow, like you know anything could happen. No, some stuff will happen in a quiz format between seven and nine. And that's not as much fun as you just go into a pub and you meet someone really interesting and that yep, something happens and blah, blah, blah. So you have to sort of like think, right, well, it's not going to be as good as, you know, that, but we're going to like be more deliberate about that. So we are, we're going to create some structure. We're going to create some organized fun. We're going to create some structure on an ongoing basis. And those things can be quite, uh, they can be very thoughtful and quite deliberate in terms of, you know, in your, hopefully most people have a kind of performance culture and they're sort of saying like, you have skill gaps A and B to work on over the next month. What objectives do you have in place to plug those gaps? And then they have to go off and kind of find ways to do that. So they can be quite focused in on that. And then you might provide some resources, like you might send them, you know, to do an online course or whatever that's brought in, you know, or, or something like that, or go and spend time with blah, like listening to this and, and do that. But the other thing is you can create like you can create like frequent practice opportunities. So if you're trying to work on your presentation skills, you need to go and like practice them and you need to demonstrate that you practice them and you need to give examples of, hey, I recorded this on Zoom. What do you think? Like recorded it again. What do you think again? I practiced myself five times and gave myself feedback. So like having that like practice feedback loop uh, is a really, really good way to reinforce those, those things that people are doing on an ongoing basis. But you can do other things which are less formal. So you could have like, um, so we don't have like, we don't have a book club in, well, we, we actually do have a, a book club at the moment because we're, we're reading this book called Virtual Selling, which is about how to sell in the virtual world. Um, but the the other thing that we do is we have a blog club. So once a week at 8.30 on a Thursday morning, we get together someone picks a blog that came out the week before that's something to do with our industry or it's got something to do with something that relates to what, how we sell or what we sell. It could be anything, but it's, it's got to be related to, to the job. And then we'll get together and we'll talk about it and we'll all reflect upon it. And we'll sort of try and come to some kind of conclusion at the end of the 30 minutes. And that's quite good because that's sort of built in reflective practice. Basically, you take something you think you, you all reflect upon it, you synthesize like some new type of like knowledge. Here's the kind of two or three things to take away from it. And then you go and try and use that basically in, in, in the future. So so there's there's things that you can build in like that. But there's actually uh you'll you'll like this, but what so one of the greatest kind of digital learning tools you've got in your organization is probably your 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 CRM platform because if people put good information in it, right? Because you can sort of, you can learn what success looks like from, from looking at that data. And that could be something really as simple as like, you look at what the win analysis was. So when you like close a deal, you've got to do a write up on that. Like that's a mandatory deal. Why did we get this? What did I do? How did I overcome such and such? And if you set the culture right in your organization, then the top billers, the other people are going to be like, Oh, it was, you know, I had to do this. I had to climb up a mountain and I had to drag something out of a fire. And, you know, the bombs were going off and, you know. And, <laughs> but and I landed I, the deal. <laughs> and I landed on my hands and knees, you know, with, with no sleep. And, but, but those things, but, but those like, those war stories, those authentic pieces of learning and reflection from like top, you know, from people who've actually been successful, are really, really valuable, as are the ones from the ones who've not been successful as well. Um, but, but actually looking at that data is good. But you can also look at other things like, okay, they had to do X and Y, they sent out this number of CVs, they did this number of interviews, but you know, like let's that's a model, right? That that we can all learn from and we can keep going back to it and reflecting on it. I think that's great, isn't it? And it is it is, it's making I think what we can almost look at it this two ways, you know, an owner of a business can go, oh, I've, I've got to make time for all this stuff, <laughs> you know, where do I find the time to then actually put aside to go, we're going to learn now. But on the same hand, actually, I would probably, I mean, from all those ideas you've just given, you know, 
I would actually think that you would get training internally in recruitment is one of the biggest pains and it's one of the biggest challenges. But actually, if you do put a more structure around it, making it much more deliberate, I think the results are going to actually be much better than we would have probably achieved, you know, just coming into the office and sitting beside one another and sharing learning. Um, so it, it, the return should be there. Yeah, and it should. Uh, there are like there are much more opportunities now. You can record a presentation mm -hmm. quite easily, and then like you know play it back. You can record your business development calls. You know you can. There's no reason why these things can't be captured, right? Okay, in a face-to-face -face meeting, it's a bit weird. You pop out your phone and go, "Just going to record this meeting." Is that okay? <laughs> People are a bit like. I could actually see you doing that, Alan, but that's <laughs> okay. I mean, fair enough, if you, you know, you could set the context in the right way. And, and, and <laughs> I, and, I think and it's writing. weird. Let's just go with it. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit weird. Um, but, but I think practicing your pitches, and I would probably say that to the audience, yeah. I mean, pop in in the chat as well if you have. I don't think this is something that, you know, recruiters, and it's very much sales oriented right now, it's business development, but I think it's one that, you know, we send these recruiters out to go and try and get jobs or we're making the calls now. How often are we, you know, listening into, you know, recording those calls in terms of working out how they could actually be trying to get through to decision makers? How are they taking on the job roles? All of that is so easy to now reflect on. And, and how many people are actually practicing how they present your company and doing that in a couple of minutes and then sharing that i don't yeah. think many will yeah there's a thing um that you know there's a there, i get there's a something i follow on linkedin and i really love a lot of the, the stuff that he, he posts but one of the things that he's very very hot on is don't practice on real prospects like most people in any type of sales focused role you know they tend to practice on a call, like they practice on a prospect and they try something out and if it works, great, we'll do more of that. And if it doesn't, then we'll do it again. But actually, there's no reason why you can't sit and have point A, point B stuck down the side of your monitor, right? In here and have a very structured like framework that you're going to use for a pitch, great questions that you're going to ask, have things here, like, you know, work on the fact that like, you know, when I'm anxious, I keep touching my head all the time. I'm going to put a big note here that says, don't touch your body. Ed, you know, so there's no reason why you can't actually use all those those things to your advantage mm -hmm. in a particular format. Um, I'm yeah. just scared what you might do with the cactus behind you now, Alan. <laughs> 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 I prefer the teddy bear. <laughs> Which you know, is I mean, there's a, horses for courses. <laughs> some, days are, some days are a cactus day, some days are a, are a moose day. So you've worked with lots of companies that are coming on from probably not doing any form of e-learning, onboarding, online, and you, you know, you've you've seen them take the journey. Have you seen what has been most successful for those companies to try and actually implement? Mm -hmm. Um well, sort of the tool tips that they've taken on board, like first steps mm -hmm. that people could take away and actually think, right, great, you know, this is where you know, this is what I'm going to do in terms of, you know, we we call it lunch and learn that we've got every month, right? You've got your book clubs or your blog clubs, which I think is quite cool. You know, things like that, that you're making that deliberate side. What what makes it effective within companies? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going, I think the key thing would be sort of when I started is that you need to go back and think about objectives for each bit of learning, right? Like there's no like sacred cows, like just because we've always given this like, you know, presentation and uh you know why like do, do people like if you want to teach somebody how to make a coffee do you really need to tell them about the history of coffee production no like <laughs> it's not important probably in our company we would but yes <laughs> <laughs> okay but like majority but, of others like, no <laughs> reconsider things go back to what's the objective of this what's the objective mm -hmm. of that what's the, and then you can start to create formats and assets and digital learning experiences that are going to get those things across I'm, sorry to interrupt. I'm, just, I'm just going to like when you call because you made a reference to it and people might not know what you mean by like assets what do you mean by assets because I think it's really important yeah so an asset could be any type of learning uh, asset that you use so it could be like something simple as like a picture it could be like a, a diagram it could be like here's our sales methodology it's a three-stage pro it's a six-stage pro it's a field you know it could be a video that explains a concept or something it could be like a PDF, 
could be like your your GDPR policy, something that's really exciting that people love to learn about, but it's very essential that people do it. But it could that could be a PDF, it could be a video, it could be a quiz, it could be a new learning object. You know, you can you know, a lot if you've got an LMS or you you've bought maybe some training, then you can get a new learning file, you know, that, that actually has like here's the content, here's a quiz, finish it, and then we know did you pass or fail. So like a learning asset could you know could be anything. Like how do you take on a job? Yeah, you know, and, these are the and, questions to ask. Yeah, so it could be a tool, so it could be like a PDF that you watch, it could be a video of somebody doing it, and then it could be like some type of assess, you know, assessment point at the end, like you know, record your thing and then let's get some feedback on that. Um, I think that the other thing that's really uh, quite successful is like creating that like creating that culture of learning because. If you actually want to sort of come out of the current situation, you know, better than you went into it as an organization, and people have got an opportunity to, to do that, is you need to actually think about like if you're not if you're not learning and trying to improve and be better right now, then you're not really serious about it ever. Mm -hmm. Because this is where you have to be better than you ever had. So, you know, it can be as Obviously, like digital learning's got a role to play because, as I mentioned, you can sort of record things, you can review stuff, that that whole thing becomes much easier. But it could be as simple as like just asking people in their weekly review or their manager, "What are you learning about? What did you learn this week?" Or tell the team, like in the team meeting, like, "What one thing did you learn last week that you'll either do more of or do less of?" So just kind of trying to embed that learning culture uh, into the team. Uh, and and I think the last thing really that people do well that kind of sustain this type of thing. Is they put in place systems and processes, and obviously it can be something that's sophisticated. Like you can put in place a full kind of like digital learning platform that runs e-learning that has lots of different learning activities and things, such as the one that we have. Uh, or it could be something a lot more basic, right? Than just like we're going to have a Teams group called you know Wednesday Wisdom or whatever, and each Wednesday there's going to be something in there that you've all to go and reflect, like. Tell us what you think about it, or tell us what you would do, or give an example of how you would do it better or differently, or, or whatever. Um, so I think, but if you create those systems and processes, then it will it will sustain over time, and it will. If you do that as an organisation, you know, if you're, if you're a business owner, it'll make your, your business more valuable as well. Yeah. If you create a platform for learning, then it means that like. You can you can onboard more and more and more people with the same amount of resources. It'd be a mistake to think you could do it with less resources, but you could probably do it with the same, and you you can do it consistently as well, and, and it's repeatable. And so therefore, people can you know they can they can see what you're doing and say right, I get what you do, and it's repeatable and it's scalable. And that is a great point because you know all recruitment owners are going to be looking at ways of providing value within their business. You know. It is generally a service business and it's based around their employees, but this is a chance to actually write down, you know, their playbook of how they're operation, you know, how they operate and how you can scale that. Um, and everything then is actually sort of documented so that you can find it, um, which, you know, as we said, hard work right now, but should give a return. So I'm just going to sort of summarize that a little bit. Thanks, Alan, because it's been really good. And I love some of the ideas, especially like, you know, the one that everybody should probably be starting to think about is, you know, why did we why did we get this placement? Where did we find the candidate? Share, you know, how hard it was to get that that placement actually, you know, converted. Because I'm sure there's a lot of creative ways that you're encouraging your clients to, you know, interview them, see them, feel comfortable in the fact that they're probably going to hire somebody they've never physically met. All of that will have great stories to it. So I love that one that anytime somebody places, they put it up in Teams and they share that story. So I think that's a really good practical one. Or even like a, even like a WhatsApp group called like Windows yeah. or something. And then yeah. just keep, keep saying they get one, they can just buy it all. Love, yeah, love that. Um, WhatsApp's actually really interesting. It's becoming very powerful um, within lockdown as well as ways of keeping networks and teams together culturally as well. Mm -hmm. So to summarize that in terms of we look, looking, we've got, we're going into the, we're, tomorrow, we'll be into our last quarter really, you know, really important quarter for recruiters. You know, you've got about six weeks to, you know, get a lot of placements and billing done before things start to go to Christmases. Now, I'm sure we might not have the same sort of Christmas party um, frenzy that we normally have, but still it's, you know, it, it, it's it's going to sort of like taper off in terms of jobs, you know, December 
uh, December time before it hopefully comes back then in January. So this is a great time to look at systems processes. I think you've said sort of step one, map it all out, look at your assets you've got and where are the gaps? What, what else would you say just between now and Christmas that somebody could be starting to think to make a difference and set themselves up better um, for scaling their business uh, virtually um, next year? Yeah, I think it's just about, the other thing is just promote more of a learning culture. Just say like, there's no point in saying, well, we've got, we've got some processes now that are different, like for our onboarding process is different. Our ongoing like training process is, is different, but actually creating more of a culture of like, of making that like a regular thing that happens like that, like mm -hmm. Zoom quiz, like it has to happen like on a Wednesday at blah, we are going to get together with zero agenda you know, with this agenda, it's going to be about learning. We're not going to talk about pipeline. We're not going to talk about that. We're just going to put that amount of time in and we'll make that a part of what we do going forward. And even if you make a deliberate about that on one day for this one set amount of time, or even if you would double the amount of time that you're doing at the moment, then that is going to, that is going to benefit you um, regardless of what platforms are. are yeah. Brilliant. Alan, thanks so much because I know that you are exceptionally busy. Um, probably worth saying because I think your platform is amazing, but it's probably not as relevant for the sort of scale of businesses that we're talking to today in terms of you generally are sort of what thousand user plus normally you're, but you know, effectively a lot of the concepts and the resources that are all available with them, um, your company, you know, I'm sure you'll be willing to share if anybody wants to um, connect and contact you. I know that you're always willing to make your time um, although you are an investor in Farfish, so that's good. You can always give me some time um, on, on sharing some of the wisdom because I, I do see your company as, as um, one of the sort of more progressive with virtual learning and how, uh, you know, how, how, how it's progressing, scaling and, and growing on that basis. So please do feel free to reach out to Alan and I'm sure he'll be um, willing to, to help. But thank you so much for sharing a lot of them. Um, recruitment leaders out there, this is going to be a topic that's going to have to be on your board board meetings and um, you're going to have to address it in terms of taking people on virtually and getting that learning from your top billers out. So start now, start doing that mapping and I'm sure it will really place your businesses in, 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 good, um, in a good way for going forward and, and being able to pick it up and get ahead of your competitors next year. Thank you, everybody, um, really, um, for, for tuning in. Again, always looking for new topics, want to be keeping this fresh. Um, please let me know. You can connect and let me know any topics you want me to cover. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks.